I want us to make a resolution to have sex 2.3 times a week, Martin said. That's how he talked. I wish to lodge a complaint, I abhor, let me say again, and so on. But he also was a good Asian fusion cook and could sew his own loose buttons back onto his shirts. He'd taken classes and indeed was now learning leather working so he could make a pair of slippers he designed. And face facts. He cared about having sex with a decent frequency, even if he had his stats confused. 2.3 is the given number for how many children people have nowadays, Lexi told him, not how often the typical couple has intercourse. Also, Martin saw honor in duty and obligation, and there was a certain kind of nobility to that, Lexi believed. They were in the backyard where Martin was building a raised bed for growing vegetables. He had a book from the library with diagrams showing how large to make the beds, using a tiny bushel basket to depict what each size bed would yield. So many baskets equaled so many heads of lettuce or bunches of radishes, for example. There was a science to everything, Martin had once told Lexi, and this illustration served to back up his view. The book sat on the patio table before her where Martin had placed it to keep it from getting dirty and he returned to the table now and again to re-examine the text. Now he stood beside Lexi and asked her to flip the page. My hands, he said, holding up his muddy palms for her to see. Lexi turned the page and offered him a sip of her iced tea. She held the glass to his mouth while he drank. What would the point threes be anyhow, she asked him. Foreplay only? Martin thought for a moment. I don't think I'd like that. Maybe each time it would have to be a different three tenths. Martin stood thinking, and Lexi pictured ideas igniting like little fires in his head. But how could we get to the last part without what comes before, Lexi asked. Say that we decided we could jettison the foreplay. Nevertheless, certain resolves have a certain sequence. Martin returned to his work. He was at the step Lexi, Lexi could tell by consulting the book in which he needed to put together the corners of the cedar boards. Use galvanized screws, the instructions said. She didn't need to ask. He'd have gotten the proper screws and probably at a discount. He would have sussed the whole thing out on the internet first. What else was he doing those nights when she was in bed waiting for him rereading her volume of Vola Stevens' poems. I'm going in, she said. I'll leave my drink for you. Martin looked puzzled and sad, but Lexi went inside, lay on the couch, and pulled the afghan over her. She watched out the window, the sun, a low, dim ball, dropping in the sky. The trouble, the main one, was their biorhythms were different. That's how Martin put it. Lexi had always been a night person. She also thought sex was the best thing you could do to close out a day. What was better than going off to sleep knowing the last activity had been the ultimate? But Martin didn't like sex at night. He was too tired. He went to bed to sleep, he said. Lexi rearranged the cover over her, tucking it closer around her legs. With the approaching gloaming, the room was cooling off, but they'd agreed to conserve the electricity. And besides, she didn't feel like getting up to adjust the thermostat. She thought of how when she'd met his mother, the woman told a story Lexi could tell, she enjoyed repeating about how she'd never had to tell her kids to go to bed. They'd always just gone on their own when it was time. Lexi tried to picture Martin's face when his mother said this, it found she couldn't remember. Maybe she'd kept herself from looking. Lexi pulled the cover over, uh, pulled the cover under her chin, I'm sorry. Was that really something to be proud of, she said. Her voice sounded tiny in the shadowed room. Who are you talking to, Martin asked, and why are you in the dark? 
He stood behind her, a thin silhouette neatly framed in the doorway. She twisted her body to more fully see him. His expression wasn't discernible, but his voice sounded disapproving. Did you bring in the glass, the book, she asked. I was just going to ask you to get them, my hands, remember? Okay, go clean up, Lexi said. Maybe she'd surprise him in the shower, she thought. How long had it been since she'd tried that? Or he, for that matter. The last time Martin had attempted anything, resolution announcement aside, was one morning months ago. Ignoring what she'd said about how she didn't like morning sex, 5 a.m., still wearing her night guard, her habitual dry throat, foul taste in her mouth, breath she knew had to be offensive. He then acted as if he were a rejected teenager when she'd said no. In the backyard, a rectangle of yellow light from the bathroom window stretched over the dark lawn. The grass wet under her feet, Lexi picked up the book and glass and turned to go into the house. The door had locked. Lexi knocked and waited for Martin to come. Nothing happened. She rapped harder. Next door, the Anderson's dog barked at the window. Lexi shivered and waited. She pounded at the door and the poodle went crazy, dashing into the glass. The chilling wind picked up. Still, nothing for Martin. She would be waiting for a long time. She would grow colder. She tried not to see it as a metaphor. Thank you.